Welcome to my class called From Watercolor Pencil to Watercolor Brush. If you don't know me, my name is Jane Brigoli. I'm an artist and an art teacher, and I have a lot of experience with all different kinds of paints, oils, acrylics, watercolors, and watercolor pencil. Watercolor pencils are really just watercolor pigment encased in a pencil. They're really easy to use. I know that you can use these because you have been drawing, you've been writing your entire life with a pencil. These just have a little bit more pigment in them that can dissolve with water. So you'll use your drawing skills, your, um, your painting skills. Watercolor pencil is great for being introduced to watercolor which can be a little bit difficult to use, but there are lots of ways to use watercolor. You can fix your pictures. There's lots of different ways to fix your pictures. People think that if you make a mistake in watercolor, you can't change it. That's not true. You can change it. One of the ways is to use watercolor pencil along with your regular watercolors. Watercolor pencils are great for journals. If you wanted to add, if you wanted to do paintings for your journals, you can add lettering to your journals. You can add sentences to your journals. You can draw right on top of your regular paintings. They're very, very versatile for journals. So your watercolor paper is really important and the better watercolor paper you get, the better your picture will turn out. And um, they can be a little expensive, uh, but it will be worth the investment. So I have a couple of different types of watercolor uh, pads uh, that you can find uh, in the local art supply store. And the most popular one is Strathmore. Um, this happens to be in a square. You, it's very rare to find it in a square, um, but whatever shape you find the Strathmore paper in the local store is fine. What you do want to make sure is that it is, it says cold press. You do not want to get hot press paper. And uh, you want to make sure it says acid free, heavy weight. Um, and this is 140 pound. You don't want to get anything less than 140 pound. It's right down here, 140 pound. Uh, this is the 400 series, which is the best uh, series of Strathmore. Um, they do have a 300 series, which is not as good. So if you, if you have to get 300 series, you can pick that up too, but 400 is better. So um, you will find this is very common in our local art supply stores. That's a good one to get. And then you may find Canson also. Uh, this is, um, again, 140 pound. And this is in another different format. This one is a very long 10 by 15. This is also an unusual format to find. Um, but whatever you want to do is fine. Um, and arches. Arches is the most expensive one that you may find around here. Um, again, this is, it will say 100% cotton. Um, you will look for that, 100% cotton, uh, 140 pound. Cold press, this is fine grain, uh, which means it's not really, really bumpy to work on. It's rather smooth. Um, if you want a textured, uh, if you're doing a lot of texture in your painting, you can get something that is uh, not fine-grained. So, this arches is a block, a watercolor block. And as you can see, it has a uh, black plastic all around the sides here. That way it keeps, it keeps the paper um, intact. And when you're done with your painting, you will look for this little section up here. You'll take your razor blade here, you'll go along the paper, all along here, and you'll pull the paper off. That way you'll have a nice, fresh, clean 
piece of paper underneath it to start your next painting. I will show you how to do that when we get to watercolor. Um, so the watercolor block will be the more expensive kind, but it's still good. And this is Aqua B watercolor paper, 100% cotton, uh, 140 pound cold press. You may not find this in our store. And this, um, this comes in individual sheets. The good thing about watercolor paper is that because it is heavyweight, you can work on both sides. You can do a painting on one side of the paper, let it dry, and then you'll have the other side of the paper to work on also. That's why you should get a really good piece of paper. So all this paper that I explained that you can get in our local art supply stores, um, it, it's really good paper because you can rework it. It's not going to rip. Um, it won't buckle. It's, um, you can erase on it. Uh, however, what you do not want to use is copy paper or printer paper. This is really thin. And um, when you put water on it, it will ripple, it will buckle, and eventually you'll make a hole right through the paper. That's how thin it is. It cannot handle water. This is only for printers. So I'm going to show you why you do not want to use printer paper. So I have a flat brush here, and I'm putting a lot of water on here. The water has soaked right through the paper onto the table. And you can also see how the paper is not flat, how it's starting to ripple and buckle. If we wait a few minutes, it will buckle even more. And in this state, because the, paper, the water goes right through the paper, you can make a hole in it really, really easily. If you're using watercolor pencil, it will make a hole. As soon as you uh, try to draw on the paper, the watercolor pencil will make a hole on the paper. That's not a good thing. You're not going to be happy with this. When I need to buy a new brush, I will go to the store and I will always end up buying a whole package. So I have a lot of brushes at home, but it's good to have options. So um, you can buy them singly. There's a whole lot of different types of brushes you can buy singly, but I like the package because there are so many different kinds of brushes. You'll get to try all different kinds. It's a lot more economical to buy them all together, a whole set of them. This one happens to have a, uh, a little, it, these are in a little package that you can open and close the package. So if you need to uh, travel with them, they're already in their little pouch. So what you do want to get for watercolor pencil and watercolor brush, you want to get water brushes. They will, they may say aqua on them. Um, they will be labeled on the outside of the package. They will be labeled either oil or acrylic brushes or they will be labeled watercolor brushes. You want to stick with the watercolor. If you have a lot of watercolor pencils like I do, you want to make a watercolor pencil chart. That way you can refer to it in the future to, de to decide what color pencil you want to use. Because sometimes they, you think you're going to put down one color and when you get water on it, it turns out to be totally different than what you thought. 
So here's a simple way to wait, make a watercolor pencil chart. I just take a ruler, go around the ruler with the pencil, I like to use plastic rulers because you can see right through them. It's so much easier. So I'm going to make my swatches about one inch by two inches, leaving space in between them. They don't have to be perfect. The kind of erasers that I like to use are white plastic erasers, and they're all different kinds. This happens to be a Stadler Mars plastic eraser. This eraser is really great and um, you can just put it on the end of your pencil. And white plastic erasers seem to work really well uh, because they don't leave a lot of marks. So. You can erase the extra lines that you don't want on there. My watercolor chart has five different types of watercolor brands. Prang, Stedler, Crayola, Derwent Inktents, Caran Dash Neo Color. When you make your color chart, it's a good idea to keep all the colors together so that you can compare from brand to brand. They're all slightly different and you'll be able to tell which color you want to use. So I have all the yellows, all the oranges, the reds, the purples. Caran d'Ache Neo Color didn't have a purple. Uh, all the blues, greens, and light greens. I try to keep it according to the color wheel. Uh, yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, green. When you're going to make your chart, you want to start at the top and you want to press down hard. Go back and forth, pressing hard. Then when you get to the middle, you want to just lighten up the pressure. So you have a medium pressure. You're going back and forth and back and forth. And then at the end, you just barely want to touch your pencil to the paper. I'm barely touching it very lightly. So you have a gradated uh, color. Hard, medium, and then light. And you always want to go in one direction. When you're ready to paint, you want to use a white paper towel or a white napkin or a white piece of toilet paper. It needs to be white so you can tell exactly how much paint you get off of the brush onto your paper towel. This one is folded into four sections. So you just want to dip your brush in the water. If you have extra water on your brush, you can, <clears throat> if you have extra water on your brush, you can tap it along the side and the extra water will go right down the edge, right into the bucket there. Or you can just use your paper towel to get the extra water off. You want to start at the bottom so I'm starting at the bottom very lightly, going back and forth and back and forth. When I do that, I'm dissolving the watercolor pigment. 
and is turning into paint. And when you get to the top, it will be the darkest. If you want to change color, you're going to get the extra color off of your, off of your brush. Sometimes I'll dip the brush in the water and get the extra color off on the paper towel. Now your brush is clean and you can go on to another color. So I will do the blue. Again, I'm starting at the very bottom. You're going from the lightest to the darkest, going back and forth. You don't want to go around in a circle because it won't be gradated anymore. By going back and forth, it's going from the darkest to the lightest. And I'll do the purple again. Back and forth from the lightest to the medium to the darkest color. And you can see the paint dissolving. You can see the watercolor pencil dissolving right before your very eyes. It's, it's really cool. And I'm going to do the, uh, the Crayola starting at the bottom, doing the middle, and then the top. The paint and the watercolor pencil is dissolving. So um, when you go to decide what kind of uh, watercolor pencil you want, there won't be a big selection in your art supply store. If you do happen to find Crayola, you can pick them up. They're relatively inexpensive and they are good. Crayola brand is, is a good brand of watercolor pencil to get. So if you can get Prang, Stedler, Crayola, Derwent, or Caran d'Ache, these are all excellent watercolor pencils to get. And they are locally available. When you change colors, Say you go from blue to green. Now I have a lot of green in my brush. What I don't want to do is put my brush in the water and swish it around because the water will turn green like that. Now I have green water. And if I want to go back to the yellow, it's going to turn the yellow into green. That's not a good thing. So you want to dip your brush in the water and then you want to use your paper towel to wipe off the rest of the paint. So I'm using this, I'm using the Crayola, the purple Crayola. I have a lot of purple on my brush. I want to get most of it on my paper towel, then dip it in and then get the rest off. So you just want to dip your brush. You don't want to swish it. Dip, don't swish. And then when you're done, you will have a tie-dye paper towel. I did my color charts on Strathmore Bristol paper. Um, this is a smooth surface. It's vellum. Um, and it's, uh, if you're just going to do charts, this is, this is great to use. It's bright white paper. You always want to get a bright white paper. You don't want to get anything that's off-white or a cream color because the colors won't show up really well. Uh, you want to get as much brightness of your paper that you can get. And uh, some papers will say bright white on the cover and you know that it's good if it says bright white on the cover. That's the kind that you want to get. If you want to work outside, if you want to do plein air painting, you can actually make a watercolor pencil palette on a piece of paper. Instead of bringing all your watercolor pencils out, instead of bringing a bunch of watercolors outside, you can just put, make a palette on a piece of paper and you can work from this palette. Very easy, very lightweight very simple. The way that you're going to make your watercolor pencil palette is you're going to choose what colors you want. If you're going to work outside, you'll need a lot of blues and a lot of greens. 
Uh, you'll need blues for the sky and the water if you're doing a seascape. You'll need greens for the trees and grasses if you're going to do a landscape. So in the middle of my palette, I have a whole section of different kinds of blues, different kinds of greens. And I used my chart to decide what kind of blues and greens that I'll put on my palette. I also have a whole section of browns at the bottom. And the browns will be good for uh, branches on trees. To make your palette, you're going to press down as hard as you can, go back and forth. You wanna go different ways. So this is the horizontal, now I wanna go vertical. And this paper is, is a thick paper. It's not smooth. This is not the smooth Bristol paper. This paper is slightly bumpy and when you put the watercolor pencil on the paper, you'll see that there are little white, uh, there are little white spots where the paper is textured. You want to press down hard enough so that all the white spots are covered over. There, now I have enough watercolor pencil on each of these spots so I can, I'll be able to use these and paint. To demonstrate how to use the watercolor pencil palette, I'm going to, uh, going to write something on this piece of paper here. And so I'm going to take some blue and get a lot of blue on the tip of my brush. Now I can go back and get more blue, or I can change colors. I'm gonna get, take the blue off. And let's see, I think I will use purple. So I'm gonna get some purple here. Just go around in a circle until you see the, the paint. You'll see purple paint on the end of your brush. And I'm using a number six, uh, round brush. This is called a round brush because the metal part here is round. A flat brush, the metal part will be flat. You see it worked. Happy painting. Now, if you want to put more blue or purple on here after you've used this, you will let these dry, let the blue dry, let the purple dry, and then you can put them back on again so that you will have a full palette of colors to use when you go outside to paint. And that's how you use a watercolor pencil palette. I'm using artist tape that I got in my local art supply store. You don't have to use artist tape to tape down your painting. You could use uh, blue painter's tape. Um, what you, you want to make sure that the tape sticks enough to your paper, but you don't want the tape to rip your paper. So what some people do is after they, when they're ready to use their tape, they'll put it on their clothes and they'll get some of the stickiness of the tape off. So now the tape is not as sticky. It's not going to rip the paper. And so now they'll use it to put on their paper. That's just a little uh, tip on using painter's tape. There are lots of different techniques um, to use. There are lots and lots of different ways to use your watercolor pencil. And one way is to blend colors. 
So I'm going to choose two, two colors to blend. And I'm using Crayola colored pencils for this. I'm going to choose uh, violet and magenta. So I'm going to I'll start with violet at the top. I'll use magenta at the bottom. And I'm pressing down hard. I'm going in one direction. You don't want to make circles because uh, you may see, it may make the paint mess up. You may see the, uh, you may see the lines of the pencil if you do circular motions. So I'm going over the purple with the magenta and going over the magenta with the purple. You can mix any two, two colors together. And they're blending together. You can still see the lines underneath and if you go over it more with your brush, you may be able to dissolve all of the lines. You just add more water and you won't see the lines as much. The more water you add, the more blended it will be. Okay, that's one way of using your watercolor pencils. So, I picked up this little spray bottle with clear water in it. I'm going to mask off a little section here. spraying one little area so I'm wetting the paper and the paper will take a second to absorb the water take the excess water off of the paper so it's damp, not wet. You can tell when paper is wet when it's shiny in the light. So now I can draw into my paper with a dry color pencil. And it is darker. It turns out really dark on the wet paper. and sometimes it will blend in. If I spray it again, it will blend even more. If I want to get rid of the lines, I can just move the paint around. Sometimes you have to wait a minute for the, for the pigment in the pencil to dissolve. But you can work on wet paper with the watercolor pencil. And it comes out, a lot of pigment comes on your brush. A lot of pigment comes on the paper from the watercolor pencil. Another thing you can do on wet paper, so you can wet the paper again. You don't have to use a spray bottle. You can use a regular brush to wet your paper. And you can take a razor blade and 
gently shave off some of the watercolor pencil onto your wet paper. And it makes a nice effect. Similar to spattering if you're using a toothbrush in watercolor. This is a good way to get texture. And if you want a finer texture, you can use sandpaper. So I'm gonna wet this next one with my brush. To show you that you don't always have to use a spray bottle. You, you may have more control with a brush than a spray bottle. So you can use sandpaper to get a finer effect. And these particles are really, really fine. They drop right on, they drop right from the sandpaper onto the paper. If you want to get texture, for example, if you're doing grass or um, if you're doing bark on trees or grass, this is great to get texture. And then you can go right along. If you want to even exaggerate it more, you can just brush it at the top here. Brush it along the top or blow it to make more lines. See, this is, watercolor pencil is extremely versatile. This would be really good to make bark because you can see the little uh, drops of pigment beneath the water. So you can layer the paint like that. You can pull the paint to one side. You can get really good gradated washes. And you can move the paint around wherever you want to. So you can make it from light to dark just on dry paper. Just the more water you add, the less paint will be on the paper. The more water you add, the less pigment, and so it'll be lighter. And I'm just going to blend it in even more. The water has a chance to, the water has a chance to dissolve the pigment, so you won't see any lines in there. You can also try drawing on the flat brush. So here's my, here's my flat brush. I'm going to put a little bit of red on one side here, letting it dissolve. And I will put some yellow on this side of the brush. And it dissolves right onto the brush. I'm going to flip this over and get more on the other side. So one side of the brush is really yellow and this side is red. So let's see what happens with this. 
Oh, that is beautiful. I'm going to try it one more time. Getting red on this side. Flip it over, get it on the other side. And then yellow. I'm going to put the yellow into the yellow. Flip it over, put the red into the red. So I have some nice stripes there. And it's blending together because it's so wet, the color is all blending together. And you can also do it with a tip and draw with a tip. So I'll put some green on this tip. So I'm letting the green dissolve. And I'm using the tip of the brush to paint with the green that I dissolved on the top of it. I think I'll use, I'll use a pink and just do a layer of pink and then dry it and then make it darker by going over it. You can also make your picture darker. So I put pink on this section here. Um, I let it dry and I'm gonna go over it again to darken the color. You can do this three or four times, however dark you want to make it. Because we're using really good paper, we can do this. This paper is not ripping. You can go over it three or four times as long as you use the good paper. All right, so I can go over this a second time after it dried, and it's a lot darker this time. I'm dipping my brush in the water. I'm not swishing because I don't want my water to turn pink. Then I, I would just have to uh, change it right away. So now it's darker. You can go over it three or four times uh, because the paper is a really good paper. Um, I believe this is a Strathmore. So those are some of the techniques that you can do with watercolor pencils. Not all of them, but some of them. It's very varied. So, um, Okay, I'm going to take this off. So as you can see, the uh, pigment did not bleed through to the other side of the paper. And after this dries, you can even use the other side of the paper to do whatever you want to. And let's see what the, let's see what this looks like after I'm all done. Not too bad. <laughs> the more colors you put on your paper towel, the more 
brilliant it will look. Like tie-dye.